I'm really keen to get your assessment of how uh, the pivot or the rebalance is going this year, 2013. There's a lot of questions about uh, whether it's on track, whether it's reactive or whether there is in fact a strategy. So I thought we might begin this, uh, this low-E CSIS conversation with uh, your assessment of the rebalance. Uh, are we seeing the rebalance getting back to a strategic focus or is the Obama administration essentially just keeping the thing afloat? What's your view? Well, I think you have to rewind a little bit back to 2009 and 10 when the Obama administration declared it was back in Asia and uh, that we were pivoting to Asia. There was, there was a bit more hype there than was necessary. Um, we never left Asia. And uh, as a natural um, matter of uh, geo strategy and geopolitics, the American people have been focused on Asia anyway. Polls about three, four years ago started showing consistently that Americans said Asia was the most important region in the world to us. So there's a certain um, natural geostrategic um, inertia to American uh, expanded engagement in Asia. You come to Washington, there are more Asia programs and Asia centers than, than, than any other region of the world. Um, so in that sense, it has its own momentum regardless of what specific policies the Obama administration announces or not. Um, in terms of strategy, my sense is that the administration did not really have a grand strategic design. It was largely derivative of the debate in the election about Iraq and uh, the sense that we had underinvested in Asia, which was probably right to some extent. And so it was a shift of emphasis, but that in and of itself is not a strategy. Strategy means defining your objectives, what's the outcome you want, how do you use your, your means and ways, your tools of statecraft. I don't think the administration ever really um, put together that kind of broad design um, and uh, never really came up with a consistent application. Um, so you had uh, for 2012 an emphasis on military, nothing on trade. Now you have an emphasis on TPP, downplaying the military. Um, so, you know, they, they do need, I think, in one way or another to start spelling out what the strategy is. That critique aside, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, man, uh, Real quick, that said, I do think that the Obama administration can point with some pride to some, uh, some real uh, shifts in emphasis uh, that will be lasting, and in particular, the focus on ASEAN and Southeast Asia. Look, just to, um, I guess, butt in there, I think that um, one of the big questions we have in Australia has been how serious is the military dimension of the rebalance? And I agree with you that uh, in some ways, uh, well, I've got, I agree with what I think I'm hearing, which is maybe the military dimension was a bit oversold uh, early on. Uh, the fact is the US has been uh, hugely invested uh, militarily in Asia for a long time and really there was just a need to uh, emphasise what's already here rather than promise all kinds of new, um, new assets in a time of um, obviously serious uh, budgetary crisis but, or budgetary trouble. But I wanted to go to the question about strategy versus uh, reaction, if you like, because I guess what some of us have seen this year is a series of reactions, mili military reactions, to uh, short-term uh, spikes of trouble, whether it's North Korea, whether it's the, uh, the air defence identification zone uh, that China announced uh, not long ago. Uh, do you think there's scope for something beyond reaction in the military sense uh, going forward? Well, there is, and I think um, it's clear that since the January 2012 um, strategic guidance that, that, that led everyone to call this rebalance instead of pivot, that the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, and the Marines are all um, focusing their best and, and shiniest new equipment and officers on the Pacific, and, uh, and, that's, and that's real. Um, on the other hand, while the Pacific share of the pie is growing. The problem with conducting a strategy is uh, they don't know how big the pie is going to be. Uh, they don't know whether the current defense uh, budget trajectories, which are very sharply declining because of sequestration, will continue to decline over the next five years or will, 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 will balance or maybe even come back up a bit. Um, and it's very hard to conceive of and implement and explain a strategy when you don't know what the resources will be. Uh, we could have 10 or 11 carriers in 15 years, or we could have seven or eight carriers. And that's an enormous difference. So the Pentagon's focusing more on the region, but our budget debates really are undercutting the ability 
uh, to decide, you know, how are we going to execute, explain uh, a strategy. So is it about selling the message in a way to the region that even with some of these reductions, even with some of these adjustments, the United States can still bring uh, really substantial deterrent power to bear when, it, when, it's, when it's needed, that the, the balance is not actually shifting in the way that some commentators suggest it is? Is it about signalling as much as it's about substance? The reality is an effective American strategy in Asia has to rest on trade, um, the military component, which is mostly coercive um, and mostly Navy and Air Force, uh, and then our diplomacy, our values, our alliances. And um, one problem with the pivot and the rebalance has been it's almost sort of like employee of the month. You know, for one month, the Pentagon is the employee for the, of the month. Then it's USTR. They've had a bit of a trouble um, sustaining consistent attention across the board uh, with all the instruments of American influence, uh, diplomatic, military, and economic. There was no trade agenda, for example, in the first Obama administration. Now they're playing that up, which is good, and they're trying to de-emphasize the military. But the problem with that is when China does something like this aid is, you find yourself reacting. So I think there needs to be a greater discipline, not only in the message, but in how the administration thinks about the tools we bring to bear. Um, that is not easy at a time when the president has a lot of other crises on his plate, in the Middle East, for example, uh, at home with his health care uh, program coming apart. And then, as I said, with the defense budget future being so uncertain because of our really dysfunctional domestic politics right now. I personally think we will, we will get our defense budget uh, back on a reasonable trajectory, but, but no one can say that for sure, and there is a, a lot of uncertainty. Yeah, well, I think uh, that's uh, the jury's out on that uh, among a few allies. We're all watching, uh, we're all watching very, very uh, closely. But I guess I want to um, move the conversation a little bit to geography, if I may. Uh, from an Australian point of view, of course, we're looking much more uh, clearly at our region now as being a, a wider Indo-Pacific region, not only East Asia and the South Pacific, where I think much of our focus was in recent years. And this ties in, of course, with the rebalance and with uh, the role of the United States in Asia. Now, as you know uh, from our previous government's defence white paper um, issued, defence white paper issued in I think May of this year, uh, there was a, uh, a blunt uh, redefinition of our region, the Indo-Pacific, and it's interesting that the new government, the Abbott government, after a little bit of to and fro on semantics, because no government likes to acknowledge that the previous government had a good idea uh, for too long, they've come round to that view. Uh, Julie Bishop, our foreign minister, is using that language very specifically. But what maybe uh, is not so clear from an Australian point of view is how serious is the United States about seeing the region as one integrated strategic system, uh, Pacific and Indian Ocean? And uh, how does that fit into the rebalance? So maybe you've got a view, uh, a view on that, Mike. Well, I, I think uh, the previous government and the current government are right to conceive of the maritime space in Asia as Indo-Pacific, not just because these waters are all connected, but because of the larger uh, balance of power and balance of influence across this hemisphere as Chinese power rises and uh, the dynamics start to shift. <clears throat> um, if you go to the Pacific Command, they will absolutely endorse this concept because their area of responsibility includes the Indian Ocean. Um, in Washington, it's not so clear. The Pentagon announced that they were interested in a Indo-Pacific concept, but it hasn't really gone anywhere. When I was in the White House, I was the senior Asia uh, advisor to President Bush, and my uh, area of responsibility included South Asia and East Asia. And the reason the Bush administration um, brought India, Pakistan, and South Asia into the East Asia Directorate. It's usually in the, in the uh, Middle East Directorate. But the reason they did that was to conceive of this as a geostrategic space um, with the idea that India's rise uh, and India's role would be important in the context of all the shifting power dynamics in East Asia. Not to contain or balance China, but just to make sure that we had a, an understanding of the multipolarity of power relations in that region, it's shifting so much. Um, there are now separate East Asia and South Asia directorates in our White House and in the State Department. Um, and so I don't think the Indo-Pacific concept has gained real traction in Washington, but I think in Hawaii at the Pacific Command, it's their backyard and it's quite natural. Um, it, it, is, it is an area where Australia should be a pivotal player. Um, as you 
you know, face both oceans. And as the U.S. looks at doing more with Australia, particularly in um, Western Australia, uh, particularly with the Navy and to some extent Air Force and Marines, this ought to be an operating, you know, geostrategic concept for us. Yeah, I think it's an, un it's an unfolding story. It's fascinating to hear from you that there was that, um, that degree of whether it was prescience or continuity going back to uh, the Bush administration. And of course, uh, the way we see the Indo-Pacific, it's not only about India, it is about India, but it's also about China because Chinese interests are expanding uh, across the Indian Ocean. Uh, and that, of course, is a, another reason to try to engage China as a constructive player as well, to, as, well as to make sure that there's a stable, a stable balance in that, uh, in that wider region.